This week on the program, squeeze into your wetsuits and order up two meatball subs, because on this episode, we're talking Point Break. My name is Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Kentucky. Matt Chrisman. Will Menneker. And we love movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Love Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. You heard him up top this week. We are so stoked to be joined by two of the hosts of the very popular Chopo Trap House, Will Menneker and Matt Chrisman in the We Hate Movies virtual studio. Fellas, thanks for coming on the program. My pleasure. Uh, you, 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 uh, you contacted Chris to get us on the podcast and you said of the Chopos, you said, give me two. That's right. <laughs> give me that's two. Right. I'll, I'll you take guys two. are my meatball sandwiches. Yeah. No tuna on wheat here. <laughs> Just it's I, we're going to talk about that for at least an hour. It just is he he's going to go back to back, right? He's that's not like a, a wait, give it a half hour. No, 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 no. That is that's a single meal, dude. That's what that is. Yeah. I will say this the, the, the single one that he starts eating doesn't look that big. It's not like a foot long, it's maybe it's six true. inches. It's like it's two uh-huh. of them, it's a foot long. They sell those at Subway, it's not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you Matt, you think this is a perfectly fine meal for 10 30 in the morning? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, it's a little early, but, uh, and also, you know, you're waiting for a bank robbery to happen. <laughs> it's a uh, sloppy food for a bank robbery. It's a very you know, ba- sitting, sitting in a car, anything with like a sauce, like a, like mm-hmm. a meatball sub that's got like a marinara. It, that's a poor choice. I would go with like an Italian, like a salami or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. that makes sense. I mean, you're shitting yeah. your pants if you're running into a fucking bank robbery with that right in your gut, like mm-hmm. uh, just landed there. Well, I'm going to shit my imagine. pants anyway running into a robbery, so I might as well have the sandwich as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Busey's character has been working working uh, hard cases for the FBI for 22 years. You think he cares if he shits his pants or throws up on the job? <laughs> I mean, no. I guess he's, not. I mean, he's he's trying to die more than Bodie in this movie. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, well, he, was sh- accomplished. he was shitting his pants when you were fucking watching Reading Rainbow, Eric, all right? <laughs> No, it's true. <laughs> he was shitting his pants in Vietnam. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of interesting. What is the what is the amount of time between him eating those meatball subs and when he is deliciously assassinated at the end of this movie? Because all of that meatball sub could just be fallen right out on the tarmac. It's true. There, it's I like mean, the next day, so he's got you know what I mean. Like uh-huh. there, it's in. There's I a, mean, the coroner no, I mean, will find some meatball pieces. I think. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely gonna they're gonna have to sweep those up. Off the runway. <laughs> that's when when he gets shot in the back. It's not blood. It's all the marinara sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Shooting out of his back stomach. <laughs> um, this is a question I had. <laughs> oh my God, his back stomach. Some what? people have those. <laughs> sure, yeah. I've heard of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it about time for Catherine Bigelow to come out of movie jail? It's been long uh, enough. I think Detroit. I is did not see Detroit. Pretty so dead. pretty I, fucking bad. But okay. like, okay, it, yeah, I'm gonna say. I'm going to say, I mean, look, I think Kevin Bigelow is an extraordinary director. I've not seen Detroit either, so I can't render an opinion on that one. I would say, it, yes, it is time for Catherine Bigelow to come out of movie jail, provided that the next movie she makes is propaganda for Hezbollah and not the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A little give and, give and take. That's all. Yeah. Both sides. What's good nice. for the goose? It's, I mean, that was the, the, the worst mistake of her career was like making important movies. Like these are the movies she should be making big, yep. dumb, stupid action movies that are sexy and fun. Yeah, like, your dark is perfect. This she is never perfect. should have hooked up with that Mark Bowl character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because they were supposed to be doing all kinds of stuff. Like they were supposed to do that. What's that uh, Ben Affleck piece of shit from Netflix? Triple Frontier. Yeah. yeah but they were supposed to do that for forever and they just dropped off, I guess, for Detroit, which. Mistake, I would say. That's a rough. Mm. Yeah. Detroit, that's a must skip. Don't worry about mm-hmm. that. What the fuck was this Netflix movie, Kevin? It was Triple Frontier. I Triple Frontier. Yeah. That Damien Chazelle, I think, did that. Yes. Uh, and that movie would have actually, I thought, have been great if at the end they just started murking that entire village like actual <laughs> special forces guys would have. Instead of being like, sense. no, no. Oh, we've come We've got to get we... Ben Affleck's body back to the United yeah. States. Hope we can't these villagers kill any will help civilians. Us. Oh, my God. But we would never do such a something like that. No. Float Ben Affleck's uh, body home on a tide of blood, I would say. That sounds yes. about right. 
That's the only way you're going to get him home to bury him under the Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like, uh, do we need, do we, hey, like, we can only have so much uh, weight in this plane to take off. Do we take, do we leave our friend's body at the bottom of a Peruvian crater or do we each get like a $5 million richer? Gee, I wonder what they do. Guys who kill people for a living. <laughs> but I think, Steve, you were saying how sexy this movie is. And we are sexy out of the gate with this slow mo intro. Uh, fucking Keanu wet as fuck. Just mm -hmm. this oh, floppy so, hair, so. smiley face, thumbs up to the camera. <laughs> we were, uh, th there was a full FBI sexy recruitment push between him and Jodie Foster and Silence yep. of the Lambs. It's like, yep. this is a sexy, fun position for a young professional. Well, 1991 yeah. was the year for cinematic FBI hotties to be having their first case <laughs> right? on the job. And we had well, Twin Peaks as well. Now we just have yeah. like fucking TV shows where like they're, uh, I mean, that's just, that shows you where it all went down. Like Quantico? Like the rookie feds. Yeah, there, 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 there's like two. Yeah, you get like one or two seasons out of it and then they just fucking say goodbye. And I don't know. Like, some of those I think are in like their 30th season somehow. Not only do they have 30 seasons, two a year. But they also have several spinoffs set in different cities like Des Moines and yes. Salt oh, yeah. Lake City. Chicago FBI. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this opening is great. I love this because it's like, you know, two kinds of ways to get wet. Like you get wet surfing and you're having fun, but then you're getting wet at work because he's just stuck in the rain mm -hmm. on this target practice thing or whatever. And it's that great like, hey, Utah. You got every one of them, man. Every little piece of paper, you fucking nailed it. You're going to be out there killing people in no time. <laughs> Dude, a, an ex-college football star <laughs> FBI agent is every fucking dad's fucking hard on. <laughs> well, yeah, he would be obviously the president there is, by now. Uh, yeah, but there is there is no college football player, at quarterback or any position. And look, I'm not saying you have to be a genius to get into the FBI, but there is no college <laughs> yeah. football player who could, could get through Quantico. No. <laughs> They yeah, can do the, the monkey bars and shit like that, but you actually have to be pretty, pretty book smart to be an FBI agent. I think IRL, absolutely correct, Will. Although this does sound like an excellent plot for like a Brian Bosworth movie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> football cop. Yes. yes. <laughs> the third Bosworth masterpiece. Called football cop, absolutely. I will say, though, about the, the Keanu opening montage that, that you know, juxtaposes um, him getting wet on the shooting range and uh, a guy surfing the, the cool ass break um it's good to know keanu hasn't lost any of his skills on the gun range because there is that video that came out of him prepping for like john wick 2 and he's oh, like yes. he's cycling through a fucking nine millimeter a shotgun a fucking mp5 and he's just working through this course pop 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 pop, pop. he's a fucking madman i mean you know keanu people say you know oh he's not a great actor or whatever but he's a great movie star he's a great presence he fucking commits oh, yeah. to everything yeah absolutely well, that's what makes this movie work. It's him and it's him and Swayze and Swayze R.I.P. But like it was a movie star as well. He was he's not he shouldn't have won an Oscar, but he definitely like brings some weird dance kid that also skydives energy to everything that uh, comes through. I think this is probably his best performance. I, I love this performance by him because it actually does show the whole spectrum. Like you get the usual Swayze, uh, you know, kind of seductive, slow, like. Hey, how you doing there, man? <laughs> but uh, you also get like the the very angry part towards the end, like, and I don't yeah, like think this, many other movies did that for him. This movie like takes his character in Roadhouse, who's sort of like I'm a bouncer for spiritual reasons, <laughs> and this movie it updates it to like I rob banks and kill people for spiritual reasons to fight against the system. Yeah. But I like because it's Bigelow; she has a real sense of uh, cruelty and perversity. So this movie shows the kind of like. A uh, Zen cowboy surfer guy, like taken to its logical extreme, would be a complete psychopath. Yeah, he would have to have oh. a Rosie. He has to have like a piece of shit, a mechanism. He's a mechanism, man. Yeah, a mechanism. <laughs> I need to see Lee Turgeson being like set on someone, like Patrick Swayze giving the order, like Rosie, go get him. And yeah. you just see Lee Turgeson fucking tearing something like, up. He's eating someone's face or whatever. <laughs> be fucking awesome. A little more face eating would have helped, I do think. I, 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 I do love how this opens, but, and then it goes directly into uh, the FBI with John C. McGinley, who. All, he's a piece of, he's a pain in the ass. He's an asshole, of course. But like he's absolutely correct about Johnny Utah. Johnny Utah is the worst police officer in any <laughs> yeah, film ever. Yes, yes. He is the worst he's cop so bad at his Damon job. In uh, the departed. He is the worst cop to ever be in a movie. Well, it's let's see. You are you are undercover, okay, with surfers. 
And you could have easily been spotted at multiple times in this movie walking into the FBI like office building with a surfboard in your fucking hand. <laughs> not to, and he's like, oh, it doesn't fit in my car. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He goes to the he goes to the beach and he's just got a walkie talkie with Harry Busey just hollering into the other end of it. <laughs> to be fair, Breaker, it's Breaker, wrapped in a blanket. Uh, special agent of Utah. Oh, come on, uh, get me over. <laughs> but to be fair, he's also like this is the FBI's fault because this dude is fucking famous. This guy was in the Rose Bowl thirty like two weeks ago. Yeah, and now that's true. And he's <laughs> walking around saying, "Hi, my name is Johnny Utah. I'm uh, I a lawyer now." I do love the detail that all these surfer dudes are watching college sports. Yes, absolutely. Like all of these fucking total beach bum guys are like, oh, yeah. And like the game stats that they start reeling mm -hmm. off and they know about the career ending knee injury, like mm -hmm. very odd turn that these surf bums. Watch like, what, what are they? Do you think that there's like maybe a slight possibility that like the uh, big time college football star who like, you know, lost an NFL career to a, a tragic injury and then, you know, worked hard to join the FBI. Gee, I wonder if like the local local or national media covered that story at <laughs> yeah. all. It's just like <laughs> maybe. college star gets his G man badge today. But, you know, I guess <laughs> these guys don't read the newspaper. But um, the other thing I like about the the opening shot of him coming to the FBI building in LA, it's like you got John C. McGinley being a prick, like he's always great at doing. But it's a really big, there's a really good tracking shot as they move around the office and it like mm -hmm. sort of like parts from them and comes back together. But then like McGinley being the asshole that he is, he's, he's like, you know, you may you may think you're a big dick and you're full of cum and I'd made like to get that cum out of you, boy. But <laughs> we we solve we solve bank robberies here based on data and data analysis. And I love that because it's just like Johnny Utah is like, I'm going to prove you wrong. What if I saw bank robbing by being cool and learning how to surf? Absolutely. <laughs> He's what if I dumb and full of cum. What if I solve them? They should milk him. What if I solve a bank robbery by coming in Lori Petty? What if that's how I solve something? Well, you oh, you think my cum is somewhere. a problem? Incorrect. My cum will be everywhere on this case. <laughs> by the way, uh, this movie is a really good portrayal about how uh, being an undercover fed is a really great way to start a long-term relationship with a woman. <laughs> Maybe oh, yeah. even have definitely. a kid with her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, especially they're, gonna go, gonna, they're definitely ending up together, of course. Use her childhood trauma against her to, to start. That's what you want to do. You want to oh, really my Lord. flip that, those that, fucking that's, tables. That's, Again. In the pick, in the pickup artist community, we call that day game. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah. Fed game. <laughs> yeah, my parents are also dead. <laughs> tragically. <laughs> yeah, how does she not just immediately be like, oh, "Get the fuck out of here"? Like, I, 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 if somebody came up to me and that was their line, like she says it's a line, it would, it would have to be a line, right? Like, yes. I, I wouldn't believe it for a minute. What, that someone has dead parents? Well, that I mean, they were coming up and telling me about it and like, I need to, you need to uh, help me learn how to surf because I have dead parents. <laughs> it would right. be better I think if he's like, really uh, saying yes because he's hunky. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think he it's Keanu Reeves. You're hunky ever. enough, they'll believe My anything. God. I think that's exactly. been proven many times. <laughs> My parents were the same plane as yours. They were in seats 24F and 24G. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, the San Diego plane crash we come to find out about. Sad story, man. Yeah. But that's how, like, he would know he's gone to, like, a step too far. He's like, yeah, my parents were killed in a plane. I mean, car accident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing, uh, uh, what I like about the fact that, like, we're talking about this stuff, like, yeah, uh, how, like, it is really about how, like, Keanu is just a hunk that Lori Petty is, like, interested in. But, like, all... What I love about this movie is that like they 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 present masculine codes and then they're like it's all bullshit. Like the spiritual thing uh, 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 that Bodhi has like, is also I mean, bullshit. It is, well, I mean, it kind of is bullshit when the mechanism oh, yeah. shit starts starts up. But like something like Angelo Pappas, uh, Gary Busey, the great Gary Busey, what God I mean, Busey, God, he's phenomenal in this Amazing. movie. My name is Angelo. Pappas. Angelo yeah. Pappas. Figure that out. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, that was the biggest question I had in this movie. I forgot his name was Angelo Pappas. And it's with, Gary, this buck tooth fucking corn fed Gary Busey with his shock totally. blonde hair running around like he's some. With a Greek some, last name. Yeah, some and Greek his, guy. His whole name means angel priest. I looked up Pappas. Apparently it translates to priest in I like Greece. That. Greek. I mean, I, I buy it for the character. He is a priest of sorts. This movie needs him so bad because you just need a gut. You know what I mean? Like, there's so much hard body, so much like everybody is. You need something for the dad in the audience to be like, "Yeah, I washed out. That guy fucking rules." Like, that's what I. That's what <laughs> yeah, I want to totally. do. Yeah, I, finally I, mean, I can see my divorced ass on screen. <laughs> see, I remember like 
I, I love this movie when I was a kid. This is like a foundational action film of the nineties. Yeah, but yeah. like, totally. I always, I always totally identified with Busey's character because, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a beach person. You know, I don't like <laughs> sand. You know, <laughs> yeah, so um, in the car with the sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. But like that, it's crucial. It's like there, there's a there has to be a kind of a love triangle in this movie, and I'm not talking about Lori Petty, but I mean like uh, Busey has to be the stand-in. He he's the father figure for Keanu, right. and then Bodie, Bodie Patrick Swayze is the daddy figure and it's about yes. which one of these influences yes. will uh you know uh, uh you know gain the uh, affection and mold the life of this young stud because why would you turn to your father when there's sexy father over here yeah <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I, I related father. to Gary Busey, too, but it was mostly because of uh, his absolutely, uh, well, shit or fantastic wardrobe. Yeah. These shirts they <laughs> oh, got great. him in, I, I, it's just incredible. I had her, trouble focusing on what was going on in the movie because there's just all kinds of shit on it. Is this part of the undercover thing? Well, I got to look like a beach guy, so I need <laughs> one of these funny shirts. <laughs> yeah, everybody's wearing shirts at the beach. Uh, no, or I, it's just like, oh, finally, I'm going undercover as someone who looks like me. <laughs> like he's not undercover as, you know, yeah. a person who wears a suit to the office. I do love that he's a living joke in the office. And like, yep. I don't know, dude, this fucking ridiculous hunk that just showed up that was in the fucking Rose Bowl last year. Put him with Pappas. I cannot be bothered. And let them let them let them like actually kill themselves. I don't care. Yeah. And it's a great it's a great thing, too. Right. Because in this movie, he's not, you know, Keanu's not partnered with the star of the department. Yeah. He's partnered with the fucking washout meatball sandwich loving dude that everybody well, hates. Keep in mind this is the Los Angeles office. You know, this is one of the <laughs> marquee right. this is one of the marquee assignments of the bureau. But what does John C. McGinley say to Johnny Utah when he first gets in the office? He's like, I make sure all my agents have good cardio. And cum gutters. And, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, take, I'll take the skin off chicken, sir. So, I mean, if like, you know, a, a guy who's obviously the big biggest hunk in America comes and work in the office, uh, you know, all the other all the other daddies are going to, sh- you know, shit on him. Yep. And, you know, I mean, uh, Pop, when you, Papas comes on, like yeah. to have him introduced, like it is funny that they're, they're like, you have to do like he he's blindfolded and asked to pick up bricks from the bottom of a pool. It's Gary and, Busey's swimming lesson. And, and Gary Busey, I don't rightly, think that's a real FBI thing. I think they're just <laughs> fucking with Pappas. Yeah. I'm like, it, 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 how, how does this help things? What, 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 how would you be in a situation where this would be important to do? Like, well, if you were blinded? Asking the exact same question. He's like, I don't know yeah. what this has to do with police work. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know either, man, but I bet you a thousand dollars you're going to hilariously jump in that pool, which he does. He does. He does like a side... Bro, it's, it's like a, nice. it's like a quarter of a triple Lindy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as, it does a quarter as, Lindy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we meet the the presidents of the United States, not the excellent band, but the the, uh, the ex presidents, the ex presidents, ex presidents. Yes, well, this is Gary Busey. That we're reviewing the footage of the robbery. Gary Busey got a great line here about, and then just like that, they vanish like a virgin on prom night. <laughs> yep, absolutely. You need those lines. Like I just, these lines, I, I missed like that. What I love about this is that all the lines are really good. Like just, mm, they, yeah. I, I read somewhere that Matthew Broderick was supposed to play the the Johnny <laughs> no. Utah part. No, what? I would. What I, can you um, just can you imagine? Yes, I am an oh. FBI agent. <laughs> Like, First of all, you're not, you're not a fucking Rose Bowl MVP if no. you're played by Matthew Broderick. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, he could have been he couldn't even be the fucking kicker on the Rose Bowl team. Get out of here. <laughs> There's the not enough one of those beaches. They would have stomped him out instantly. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough apple carts in the world to have him stand next to Patrick Swayze. All right. That's nope. not gonna yeah, happen. No, yeah. War uh, War Child, back off. Wait. You know what? Do whatever you're going to do, War Child. If you want to rip him apart, go right the fuck ahead. Oh, War Child. <laughs> it it kind of sucks that only James LaGrosse uh, as Nixon is doing a presidential impression. Yep. He's the only one who's committed like, to the part, you know? Yep. I mean, all these dudes should be doing it. I mean, and look, and then as they're running out of the bank, and he says, "I'm not a crook." I mean, like that's a good line, but I mean, Carter, he could have had a joke about stagflation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have run out of the bank. All this sweet money. <laughs> <laughs> you should have Patrick Swayze running out of the bank like as Reagan and he's just like AIDS are fake bye <laughs> or just kind of, his opening line is just like nobody in here is a fan of Jodie Foster are they just checking <laughs> just checking <laughs> wish that dude had better aim unfortunately oh yeah 
He had perfectly fine aim. He had a too little small caliber pistol. <laughs> oh, that was the problem. Fair point. Oh, you're right. He, he, he hit him right him. in the That's chest. Right. If he'd had yeah. a nine millimeter, he would have That's dissolved right. into dust. <laughs> <laughs> I, a Swayze as Reagan, the you know, of course, Reagan is the leader of the ex-presidents. He should have come in and said, uh, the scariest words in the English language are I'm from the government and I'm here to help. But uh, I'm, I, that's going to be top now by the, if you move, I'm going to shoot you in the face with this 44 caliber Magnum handgun I have. Mm-hmm. That's another cool thing about this movie is that before before it is revealed who the ex-presidents are and you only know them as their presidential characters, they are identified by each having a really cool gun and yep. not just like a standard movie gun. Swayze He's got that big like pistol, like a cowboy style, like Colt oh, 44. Yeah. And then one of them has the Steyr, you know, like the the, the, the the ultimate henchman in Die Hard. He rocks one of those. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the classic pump, classic pump shoddy. But oh, it's just it's it's Bigelow's. It's like she she likes guns. She's got yeah. she's got a sense Definitely. for perversity and violence. And that's what makes her such a good director. Well, it's the same thing when they do the fake or not fake the the failed tits up raid on the neo Nazi you know surf Nazis place because that is like when they're getting all their shit together and he's like they're getting a whole army together in there whatever it is <laughs> it is like you don't see the same weapon twice that yes, is a exactly, different gun exactly. for every fucking shot I love it oh wait no it's one of the war child guys that has the styre but yeah uh, mm. yeah and then and then and then the, sh- the the shotgun with the drum magazine on it oh come oh on oh my god now we're know, talking. isn't there a there's an imdb but for guns and movies mm-hmm. right <laughs> yes this would be a good good one to look I've, up I think it's literally the IMGB. <laughs> you can't even believe it. Makes sense. Uh, so, you know, th- someone makes a, a, a passing reference to Pappas's like, theory about who the ex-presidents are. And Keanu finally, you know, wears him down and gets him to tell him. And he's like, I think the ex-presidents are surfers. And he's like so ready to tell this fucking theory to Keanu. And I love this whole setup. They're watching the footage. They're definitely still at the office. You better believe we're drinking Coronas at night. Oh, yeah. yeah, Drinking at work. I do love that like Keanu is just like, wait, so you think that these guys are surfers? Like guys who like hang 10 surf guy. Unlike regular FBI agents, like, like he does the surf guy voice and nothing changes. Sounds exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Another thing I like about this movie as like a, a quintessential 90s action movie is that it communicates, you know, like a certain fear that, you know, the rise in um, al- alternative lifestyles like grunge music or skateboarding Scary. could lead to, you know, uh, extremes and a need for more extremes, which would lead to extreme crimes like skateboarding crimes or grunge crimes. <laughs> and then, yes, indeed, <laughs> surfing crimes. Oh, yeah. It's, and, and the most dangerous of all, which are skydiving crimes. That's mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because that's the most extreme. But, that's the most extreme. Yeah, the easiest interest. way to get on the crime wave is a, a surfing. You know? Yeah. Well, there, you know, there was a starter pack. Uh, by the way, the, the, uh, the uh, skydiving version of this movie, Wesley Snipes Drop Zone, yes. uh, which came out only a few years later, also features Gary Busey. Of course. But yes. it's the bad guy. Yes. He basically plays uh, Patrick Swayze's character in that movie. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And he gets to have, have his cake and eat it too. And also yeah. skydive. Steve, you're just saying your your father wasn't like an extreme skydiver back in the nineties, right? He was. Yeah. His 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 license plate said I skydive for about <laughs> um, a decade until he stopped doing it. Uh yeah. I, so the, the, when they so they have to after uh the bank robbery happens, they do the drop car and they do the surfer thing. I like how uh, he has to get as dumb as Utah. Busey has to get as dumb as Utah to like want to do this because he's like, "Are you mad? Are you mad as me? Okay, yes. let's do this now. Let's just be yes. fucking stupid and do it." <laughs> well, it's just, yeah, it's, a, that, it's his whole thing of like, "You got you gotta feel it in your blood, man." Yeah. No, thank you. I, I did so. Sex wax. Did everybody when they were younger <clears throat> see this in stores and be like? They just let that stuff out in the in the front. <laughs> like, like, I, when I was Can a kid, they I was do like, that? Yeah. What, really? What do you, is is all this stuff you for get, sex? You get a good wax on your dome, and and yeah. that prevents pregnancy. Mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, that's where I was. At. I was like, damn, yeah. I got a world to fucking discover here. <laughs> uh, well, you so discovered you put, like, it some now. of that, some of that on your schwanz there, you know, and then it like hardens up like those shells you'd put on ice cream cones. Right. Like, that's then that's you what could, you're saying. You could yeah, start traction. getting. A little soft, and it won't matter. No, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it keeps going. You get that. The, the fear oh, no, now. just fucking you with this hollow, thin dildo, basically, <laughs> yes. is what you say. Uh, it, it's been done. 
But so Johnny Utah goes <laughs> undercover by um, driving from his actual apartment in his actual car to mm-hmm. a different part of town and then giving people his actual name. That is what undercover police work yeah. is all about. <laughs> He's that's got like the, the FBI, like fucking law enforcement <laughs> parking sticker on the windshield. Well, like, don't I- mind that. <laughs> Uh, they don't so- show the scene when Lori Petty finds his badge because that's like so like rushed at the end of the movie. But yeah. I just want her to like take take a piss at his apartment and then just see all of his graduation photos and be like, <laughs> wait a second. That'd be funny if he like uh, he kept showing up to the surfing beaches and to hang out with Lori Petty wearing instead of just in a suit wearing one of those FBI windbreakers with just <laughs> FBI on the back of it. No, I, I'm just I swear it stands for female body inspector. <laughs> Yeah, they just, they've like freshly fucked and he's still cum drunk and she's like, oh, geez, I need a t-shirt. Can I borrow one of yours? He's like, yeah, in the dresser, top drawer. And it's just all fucking like Quantico, Quantico t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, look, what I want is like anyone to ask him about this fucking law job he has and watch this dude fum- fumble through an explanation. <laughs> you know what, dude? It's one question. Oh, so what kind of law do you practice? Uh, <laughs> the law kind? Sports? <laughs> yes. Law sports and order. Law. Sports law. <laughs> so he goes to the beach so his whole thing is like yeah get in good with the surfers because Busey's the theory about you know they rob four months out of the year and then they're out of here oh they must be following the, the surf or whatever so he goes and surfs and fucks it up immediately and almost kills himself 10 seconds on the job uh, and is saved by Lori Petty um, which is playing Tyler in this movie yeah and um, did you love so, Lori Petty? She's, she's, she's great. great. And she was, this is during like her hate. This and Hell League yeah. of Her Own are like the, yeah. she's so fucking good in them. Hey, Tank, tank Girl, not Tank Girl, behind. anyone? Tank yeah. Girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of fun. Oh, my God. But then eventually in the army now. Yeah. Oh, you guys I see that? She's the well, third in that movie. Short stuff yeah. 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 I mean, she, yeah. she just, she just flamed out because she became like 38 years old, which is which, not, not allowed. How dare she? Yeah. It's a yeah. shame. Yeah. Now you have to go to Netflix. Sorry. You're going to be on Orange is the New Black for four seasons. Hey, she was just on Station 11. Oh, she was? Oh, yeah. cool. I, I got to that. Didn't yet. See it. That's another reason for me to check it out. Um, I love the great, uh, <laughs> I'm Johnny Utah. Who cares? <laughs> she fucking yells at him. It's great. Did you? So James Cameron got uh, Catherine Bigelow this this job essentially because Blue Steel fucking tanked. Uh, it, even though very good movie, it is. A good I movie. have to. I have to imagine what he was drawn to. So like, I imagine him in the editing bay with her and just being like. You want to hang on to those water shots a little longer? Get off my set, shots. Jim Cameron. Get off my <laughs> set. What? But this is really good. This is the good stuff, Catherine. I don't know about this gun stuff. But what if he was a here. blue cop? <laughs> <laughs> Can he swim? Uh, I mean, Bodhi was like the original way of water mindset. It's totally. True. It's true. the source, he man. He doesn't have the, the dreads, though. He doesn't have the magnificent dreads. I'd like to fuck you with a blue tail or whatever. <laughs> the thing about the way of water that is that it goes in cycles. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's just doing, you know, he he uh, seduces her by using her dead parents against her, which is what you want to do. Yep. And she starts giving him lessons. We get a fun uh, surfing montage. and Which is nice. It's yeah. two sexy people in wetsuits. It's not sure. too shabby. Yeah. No problems yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I love that everyone is making fun of Keanu's surfboard. Yeah, it's like sucked. every single the thing person. Is shit. <laughs> what a dog shit surfboard, surfboard, man. <laughs> well, you Matt, get you're in California. California. fucking thing, bro. You're in California. Yeah. You know, you know those pig surfboards are bullshit, man. Fucking pig boards. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, he has a, he, Keanu Reeves has he has a Mickey Mouse surfboard, but I also love that how he's like instantly clocked as um not a surfer and not mm-hmm. from California just because he's not blonde. Yep. He's yeah, the right. only not blonde person in this movie other than Lori Petty. Mm-hmm. Like at this point, if you're living out there, man, Johnny Utah, like it's at least sun kissed at this point in some way. And you'd think someone named Johnny Utah would be blonde. <laughs> I, also, <Right>? Mormon? <laughs> yeah. I also noticed uh, there's a scene where uh, Lori Petty and like earlier in their courtship when he's trying to get her to um, teach him to surf. She's like, OK, city boy. It's like city boy. Aren't you from like Orange County You're or something? Like, what are you talking about? Talking about? Yeah, totally. He's from Ohio. <laughs> yeah, he says he's from Ohio, which she later also refers to as Kansas, which is fair. <laughs> he just mixes it up. <laughs> um, this is the uh, he gets invited to a fun beach party with all of uh, the bank robbers. 
and we're playing football. Like beach these, football. That was beach. a great. It was a, it was a great um playing with the boys style yes. sequence. Yes. But <laughs> I just I just thought like think how much better that scene would have been if they were playing dogfight beach football like in <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh yeah. Offense and defense simultaneously. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's great. It's great watching the athleticism of Patrick Swayze right here, too. Oh, yeah, not he's got a Swayze. killer he's, bot as well. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, he all, looks great. All and, these then, guys like, are and, fucking and then he tough. tackles Swayze and they all roll up on him and they're like, what the fuck, man? We were just yep. having a good time. And he's like, hey, don't you know who this is? It's Johnny freaking Utah. You know, and they're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, MVP of the Rose Bowl. They all turn into fucking like Kirk, Kirk Herb Street. Like <laughs> in a, in a fucking split second. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh you, wow. Number nine. They're remembering yeah. the number. Well, like, these are that's uh, really this is a, a a type of burnout I'm unfamiliar with the jock burnout. Like I'm more we're like you go to some dude's house and you play Mario Party and get stoned. Yeah, video and, game burnout. Yeah, exactly. Just melt into yeah. a couch kind of a scenario. Mm-hmm. The idea mm-hmm. that you would do something with somebody else, it's physical. I guess that they would watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is like someone actually meeting Mario to do your analogy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, 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 it's a great sequence uh, soundtrack to the worst cover of Smoke on the Water I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I it will sucks. say, aside a from the one, the one Concrete Blonde song when Lori Petty's getting changed, the soundtrack kind of is pretty weak. I think. Yeah. I, I think the Concrete but Blonde you, song you is very end good. With a, you end with a rat tune, though. Yeah, that that's R A double T. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember the scene where, where uh, Utah is first trying to surf, and like the, the chorus of the song is like, I don't fall off. Hope I keep standing on this surfboard. <laughs> I don't fall over. Don't want to fall. Right. I will not fall. I will not fall. It's just That's an it. instructional just manual it. they're playing on tape. That's right. So Keanu uh, gets some information here where it's like, oh, in all these bank robberies, the only thing left behind at one point was a hair. They do some chemical analysis and he has this idea. Oh, like surfers are territorial. Why don't we go to some of these closed beaches that are, you know, shut down due to water pollution and we'll get some hair samples and try to see if these are the guys. And there's this like quick couple of scenes of both Keanu and Gary Busey stealing hair from people, which is awesome. <laughs> the LA, there should have been a, a some sort of uh, expose about that in the local news. <laughs> totally. Federal, these dudes running around the beach cutting hair. hair. Without a warrant in the Southlands. I just want Gary Busey in a fucking urinal. Just, oh, this, this is pube heaven. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, they, they missed a this beat. This is pube by, pay dirt. <laughs> the FBI, I mean, good cops, good feds that they are. They missed a beat, but like every, every beach has the outside um, shower where you pull the thing and wash mm-hmm. the salt oh, water yeah. off of you. Yeah. Yep. Just yep. fish around in the drain of that thing. Think yeah, how much yeah. fucking hair is stuck in there. It's just, it's a hair collector. Well, totally. Yeah. At a public beach, fucking forget it. You'll be there for days getting that shit oh, out. Only to evade the headline former college football star stealing <laughs> hair from random denizens of the beach like i that you don't want to see that yeah i'm into weird sex stuff i collect hair from drains <laughs> Well, it's like, oh, dude, you've got a bug on your back. I'm like, are you hitting on me right now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, that's that's my business. If I've got a bug on my back, dude. the dude who's like the lab tech who yeah. uh, tells them like what the chemicals are in that hair that they find. Mm. Do you catch? Uh, it's the guy who Jeffrey the Lebowski's landlord. landlord. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah! He recently passed away. I found out just in May. I couldn't believe it. That's too bad. One, yeah, RPD. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, where he. Because of the hair collecting, it's like, oh, now I've run afoul of Anthony Kiedis and these other surf Nazi dudes. <laughs> and this is a great, like, we're just getting in a fight on the beach, which is awesome. Gary Busey almost blows the fucking undercover shit right here, too. This Matt- might be my favorite. Like, it just, like, I hear it and I'm like, what? And like, <laughs> Back off War Child. <laughs> yes. A man named yeah. War Child. Yeah. That just, it's not going to compute. I'm sorry. That's like from an image comic from like 1993. <laughs> Back off War <laughs> Child. Let blood Drawn by Rob it. Liefeld. The, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huge chest muscles. <laughs> Uh, speaking of speaking of lines that stick in my head, um, it's a shame Anthony Kiedis didn't get more line reads in this movie because he really right. he really kills it when he was like, that would be a waste of time. He's like doing a Christopher <laughs> Walken impression or something. He's not it's quite a sure little bizarre, when to say the words. But yeah, thankfully War Child saves it in the end that we're just going to yeah. kick your ass. He had a, a little career. He was in the Charlie Sheen movie, The Chase. The I think Chase. He, oh I think my he showed God. up on Married with Children a couple of times or something like the that. The Chase is like, a future episode. Yes. Oh, of course, yeah. Isn't The Chase both him and Flea? Yes. 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 They're, in a, yes. they're in a truck and they're, they're 
part of the, the, the police are pursuing them in the chase and then they yes. join in as like vigilantes. Yeah, the OG uh, 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 Buffy, what's her name? Uh, oh, uh, Christy Swanson. Swanson. Yeah, yeah, Christy Swanson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, she plays Dalton Voss's daughter. Why do I, <laughs> oh, I, I know they, they fuck in the car. In that There's that sex scene where they're like just fucking yes, in the car. Yes, and yes. Yeah, yeah, sex yeah. in the car, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But to your <laughs> point, teenage the, years remember that. The fact nobody finds this enormous Star Wars style fucking walkie talkie that he's got on. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, like it's on. It's in his <laughs> house and it's hollering. Like, how is nobody computing that? There's. And, and, Patrick Swayze's right there. <laughs> and like fucking Gary Busey's like, you talk, come in, you talk, come no, in. I'm just listening to AM radio. I just like Rush Limbaugh, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, and it's Gary Busey. Like, he can't whisper. It's not possible. <laughs> no, it's, definitely it's not. It's just the barking. <laughs> Him <laughs> barreling down those stairs and then yes. being caught for like, oh, oh. Oh, you're seeing a kid. <laughs> There's a kid that uh, stole, stole my radio. You know, he's just yes. putting it together as he goes. It's great. But Swayze is, you know, he comes in and saves the day here because Keanu's kind of getting, he, he holds his own for a while. These Nazis are beating him up. And then, you know, he starts getting his ass handed to him. Bodhi comes in. And we get to see, this is some like Patrick Swayze pseudo martial arts. Yeah. But not really. He's doing but some, yeah, he's doing some sort of like very, let's be honest. So Swayze's got, you know, he's got a great physique, but it was some, some weak looking kicks he was laying down on, <laughs> on Anthony Key. Some weak sort of like, you know, side roundhouse, you know, dance kicks. Yep. You know, yeah, it's the yeah. kicks of a dancer, you know, that's, <laughs> It doesn't. They, it's not going to take you down or anything. But yeah, it, it, thank God, fucking Swayze could waste all these guys. He knew. He know. He knew like twelve karate moves, and he needed them in every movie. He used it in yep. the Outsiders, where they had to like write it into Essie Hinton's The Outsiders. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, like, oh, they took karate classes in like nineteen fifties dirt Iowa. Sure, absolutely. It's crazy. Like in that scene too in uh, Ghost, where like Whoopi goes inside him, and she's like, "Oh, by the way, I took karate class." And then it's Patrick Swayze. Is he doing karate, but as Whoopi Goldberg possessing him doing karate? I'd like that. I would like that. <laughs> I would like to be possessed by a ghost for karate purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only. That's <laughs> only the one I would do. I yeah. Think. Dude, karate ghost. Well, actually, karate ghost, that's kind of Ninja 3 The Domination. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, great. A classic <laughs> film. Cla film. Oh, oh, yeah. It's classic film. Um, but yeah, when Busey runs down the stairs, yeah, it's this like, what do you do? Oh, I mean, have you seen kids who stole my radio? Like, it's like, man... Get it together, dude. How about some professionalism? No wonder you were the fucking departmental joke, dude. Well, that, I mean, th what's so amazing is like, so these guys beat him up and then he's just like, they're the robbers. Like immediately <laughs> yes. he's like, Johnny Utah, the dumbass. It's just like, well, they're the bad guys. They have to be the bad guys. Not this beautiful man right. who I've just met. It can't, cannot be, be him. They follow these guys home and they show them in this, in this, uh, fucking like war rig from uh, Fury Road <laughs> and they're waving back and yes. forth through traffic and then sliding into the the park like this parking on the front yard of the house it's like yeah these guys definitely pulled off 28 <laughs> bank robberies in three years successfully yep. in and out in anybody seconds. got away every time for sure they got it together <laughs> It doesn't make a lot of sense. And John C. McGinley is like on fire, furious about oh how long God. this is. It's been two weeks, John yes. C. McGinley. This is a fucking crime that's been, uh, they say he, they've done like tw 27 of these things or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's been over a couple summers. It's well, going to take a, a month. They needed some sort of throwaway line to establish a backstory where like surfers, you know, killed his parents or <laughs> harassed him in school or something. That'd be great. That would be, yeah, he was, he was beaten with a surfboard in yeah. the alley of a bar or something. He, he pulls up his shirt. He's got three little spikes in, in the exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> little scar situation. But I mean, like the, the McGinley part's interesting, but it, it, it does it because of Catherine Bigelow's love for authority. Like it, you need to push that further. Like, cause at the end, when Utah throws his badge away, like you need to set up that like the FBI is is actually worse than these dudes who are just fucking enjoying the ride. Well, kind of yeah, thing. you see, the FBI is part of the system that crushes the human spirit, and um, <laughs> right. and bank ro and robbing banks and surfing are what liberate the human spirit. I see, and you I know, see. and then for like the 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 workaday Joes out there, when they hear about banks getting robbed and you know people and or or just people surfing, they go, you know what? There's still hope. There's still hope out there. <laughs> right. I could be like that. When they're driving to work in their metal coffins or whatever, which is a yeah, great, right. also a great line. My God, yes, it is inspiring. It it inspires human hope. There, and it's it's a shame. I guess bank robbery is kind of uh, passe these days, huh? Yeah, yep. but you I don't see I, it so much. 
So he's going to a party at Patrick Swayze's house. There's a huge fucking, an honest to goodness raid scheduled for the morning, which people do remind him when he shows up late. It's his raid. It's actually yes. your <laughs> raid that you are going to be late to. And which like, you he, know, he shouldn't fucking be there. He's yeah. He's a, he's the undercover guy. <laughs> yep. Why is he at the raid? Busey says to him, like, yeah, you just cover the back entrance, but just, like, kind of hang back because we don't want to blow your cover. Like, you think Warchild, a guy he fought just a day before, is not going to recognize the guy who arrested him as the dude yep. he saw on the beach the day before. As soon as he gets the central booking, he's going to tell someone. Yeah, and oh, yeah. you don't think that's going to get back to, to Bodie? But, like, yeah. and, I mean, you know, like, hey, look, we've all been in our 20s working jobs. You know, you stay a little too late with your improv team getting drunk, you know, having a good time. <laughs> and maybe you blow the meeting the next morning. But nobody has a fucking shotgun at your throat. <laughs> well, also, the Gary Busey's like, oh, you better go home and get a good night's sleep. We got an early morning tomorrow. <laughs> better and go to like, a surfing party. And then but that yeah. but his his responsibility as being undercover, like, go to that party. That's what you're fucking doing, yes. Johnny Utah. Yep. And uh, th of course, uh, going into the party, we hear uh, the song that has uh, blessed so many uh, senior yearbooks in the quotation pages. Jimi Hendrix's "If Six Was a Nine. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, if I get kissed with a, if I get a, if I get to do that tequila shot trick, I'm really mm -hmm. happy. I, I'd probably fumble it. I'd probably oh well, like, that looked fun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd probably spit true. it all out immediately. But you know, <laughs> you do um, what you can. But at this party is where Bodie, you know, they have a little like campfire out on the beach and Bodie's explaining all the stuff about like Bell's Beach, Australia. And that's where the big ones come in right. and, it's, you know, setting up the last moments of the movie. Of it's course. just funny. It's just, if I ever had to run away from here, I'd go exactly <laughs> to this address. <laughs> Uh, and he reminds he reminds Johnny Utah it's not tragic to do to die doing what you love. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep one, uh, that in your back pocket. Just in from the internet ticker, James Lagros, the great James Lagros, is yeah, an adrenaline. You love Lagros. He's he's fantastic at everything. He's has to be an adrenaline junkie because he's married to Christina Loja, the daughter of Robert Loja. Dude, oh my wow. god, wow. actually wow. wanting to have Christmas with Robert Loja? That's a fucking <laughs> death wish, dude. <laughs> Welcome back to Christmas with Robert Loja. I can't even, dude. I can't even imagine that just like fucking sweating through your shirt at every Thanksgiving. No way. Sounds like another great party. Do that right you after. You know the who paid one. for this Thanksgiving dinner, don't you? Orange juice. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Keanu Reeves makes the very smart decision here to walk away from all the talk of uh, uh, surfing places we'd love to go and go and romance Lori Petty in Hell this yeah. in this empty room that they have in the back. And yeah. this is what I mean. I think that, I mean, there's a couple really good uh, uh, surfing uh, montages scenes in this movie. The night surfing scene yeah. might be my favorite. Night surfing is great, but it comes right after he gets fucking ridiculously cockbocked by Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Because they're talking about the, you know, it's it's okay to you know die doing what you love or whatever. And Lori Petty's like, hey, little too much testosterone for me. And she gets up from the campfire mm -hmm. and gives Keanu the old hand on the shoulder as she walks away. Like, let's fucking go. Mm -hmm. And then he follows a little later and they're right there in that room. And I was like. Boom, here it goes. Come on. And then Patrick Swayze runs right in and he's like, night surf, night surf. And it's like, I'm about to get my fucking dick sucked here, buddy. Come on. I thought there was going to be a threesome. Uh, but, oh, shit. Hey, Ooh, hey, you know. Be nice. Now night, we're talking. The night surf is awesome, but it's also the worst day for night I've ever seen. Like, it is oh, I thought really it was a good day for night, ah, actually. Okay. You're never going to not notice it, Steve. There's, yeah, not, there's no such thing as flawless day for night. And you don't want to be putting actors out swimming at night, dude. <laughs> But that, of course, leads to uh, uh, him uh, boning Lori Petty on the beach. Uh, oh, yeah. And they all go to the diner uh, while they he'd like leave the fire for them. You know, it's it, you know what he tried. He tried to get him away from Lori Petty. Patrick Swayze, but Bodie tried to get away. Yep. But he's like, you know what? He won. Keep the fire here. They're clearly going to fuck. Mm -hmm. They're still out there just doing the thing. And we're going to go have diner food and maybe rob a bank. <laughs> My favorite role here, because listen, I'm not I'm not surfing. If you know when I would be dead in this movie is like in the first scene, I would be killed surfing. But Lee Turgeson's role of dude laying by fire and kind of just kicking it every now and again. <laughs> yep. That's a job I could do for the surf team. <laughs> so, Absolutely. You know, it's funny. So just uh, to be clear, violent kidnapper over surfer. As far as what you would like to oh, do, of course, Chris. Okay. Come on, it's not even a I just mean, I is that moment? Surfer. I'm just saying. I would grab. Well, no, I just someone. mean in that moment. Oh, you know, okay. I'm not uh, yeah. surfing. I'm Fair. just I'm kicking the fire around. Fair point. 
I was gonna say uh, it's funny because um just 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 last night or I was uh, flying back from Florida and the movie I watched on the plane was Wayne's World and it's funny oh, because nice. Lee, Lee the Lee the mechanism uh, Turgeson basically <laughs> plays right. the exact same character in Wayne's World he's Wayne and Garth's mechanism and he <laughs> right. has basically the exact same haircut in Wayne's World as he does in Point Break. But yeah, yeah, so this is the raid. And this scene is fucking excellent, even though it's insane. Again, yeah, he's like, I do love Keanu. He's like, I better stay out back so no one notices me <laughs> at this fucking enormous raid. I also love that the FBI is congregating and some guy's like, well, well might as well mow my lawn. Yep. <laughs> like, can someone talk to him? <laughs> with, with, a, with a push mower that is also gas powered? Yep. Do those mm-hmm. ever exist? I, I don't. It's a may, maybe there was a bridge between those technologies, but it is a beautiful machine. <laughs> I, I, I imagine say, that I, would I, be the guy who would absolutely like once Johnny Utah and War Child are on his lawn. He's like, "Fuck, is that Johnny Utah? <laughs> hey, man, can I get your fucking autograph?" <laughs> exactly. uh, I I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I'm mean, like, I, I saw this movie. I watched this movie all the time when I was a kid. But like rewatching it, like the the, the images, the scenes in the movie that st- stood out in my head more than anything when I just thought about Point Break, are both from this raid scene. One uh-huh. is Anthony Kiedis shooting his foot off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Two. <laughs> Is Keanu Reeves' face almost getting pushed into a running lawnmower? Like that, mm, that yes. made my hair stand on edge when and I was a three kid. Three yeah. is the lady in the shower. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's not forget all the, the, the all the nudity. And you know, Matt, Matt, you and I have talked about this. This is like early '90s, still kind of the '80s. In every action movie, there needed to be a scene of gratuitous boobage. Had to it have it. Matter. You had to have it. You're not getting a green law. light unless you give me something where and, there's tits. <laughs> And, you know, like, I, and I think maybe this is a nod to, to Bigelow as the director is that, like, she always has to kind of, like, there's a one-upsmanship there because she's sort of in a boys club. So it's not just that she's giving you the boobage. She's going to add an extra level of sadism and make the uh, the, 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 the boobage, the, 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 the object of boobery, um, turn into a psycho and start stabbing people and going <laughs> insane and then having to yep. get knocked yes. out. Beat the shit out of Johnny Utah. It's not, it's just, not just that yes. they, like, you know, like a male director would have just had a woman in a shower and like, had her ah! tits out and going, ah, and then scream away. But like, no, like she gets in on the fucking carnage. Yeah, I the mean, boobs are not, the, the boobs you think are in danger, but they're dangerous boobs. Yes, <laughs> if, yes, exactly. If you are ranking passive. ranking the uh, victims of the raid, she's number two. Like War Child is number one because he almost <laughs> fucking pushes Keanu's face into the lawnmower. Number two has to be this lady. Then number four is probably Anthony Kiedis. And then uh, five, uh, not applicable is uh, Tom Sizemore. Also, so that woman, uh, uh, her character's name is Freight Train. <laughs> uh, oh boy. She's played by Julie Michaels, who is the uh, the stripper in another Patrick Swayze movie, Roadhouse. Mm. Wow. Oh, okay. that's, that's talking about formative films for me. That scene in the VHS <laughs> copy of it. Yeah. Home. <laughs> We're out Very the tracking, important. did you? Um, oh, God. Another thing I like about the, the raid scene is that it just proves that John C. McGinley and all the other dickhead G-men at the fucking Los Angeles office are exactly right about yes. Utah and Pappas. They have no fucking clue what they're doing. Nope. They half-ass this whole thing. They, their walkie-talkies and whole communication get undone by a fucking lawnmower. <laughs> and then he just immediately gets the woman who answers the door killed. Yep. Immediately, just gunned down. It's like the lead, and like his whole brilliant plan for gaining entrance to their house is to pretend his fucking dog is missing. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> hey, Scooby, Scooby! <laughs> it's so dumb, and I, mean, I just love it. I love the woman at the door giving him shit. Like, fuck you, man! I don't know where your dog is. Get out of my house. <laughs> But yeah, the the uh, the ra- the raidees are smartly like, let's bring out every gun we've ever seen in our lives, uh, which rules. And I get- think we're only missing like a rocket launcher, yeah, as far as like the nice. lineup of golden eye weapons. <laughs> and this, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> just the golden gun, golden gun, one shot, one kill. Dude, fra- uh, freight trade was slappers only, and she she got pretty far. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and another another really cool part about this scene, and you know, I, I know I know Matt must have clocked this. The wonderful use of squibs in this movie. Oh, and the God. really, Ma. really good headshot on that one guy who's like, I'll kill this bitch, man. Yep. Yeah. And, then, and then fucking Busey just gets like, just gets about like a half a second glance at his forehead. And it's yeah. 
boom, oh, yeah. right in the fucking middle of his forehead. Oh. And you can see like the fucking, like the crater it made and like the stippling <laughs> and shit. Oh, so there's good. except no substitutes. No, it's the best <laughs> thing. I, I am so sad those things. You don't see, I mean, I that's why I like ambulance so much is because they actually squibs again. Yes. Like I, I got I so excited heaven. and I was like, oh my God, oh, this is the best movie I've ever seen. It's just it's fucking fantastic. But you also, were excited. The dude who runs the fucking squib factory was thrilled, <laughs> dude. What are you kidding? He can have a Christmas again. We're back open, boys. <laughs> um, exactly. We got we got to talk now though about probably the coolest payoff to this whole botched raid scenario is the brief appearance of Tom Sizemore yes. As, yes. as an undercover cop. And he's like, hey, you assholes. He's like, these guys, I had them on the week for, I've had them on the line for three months. They were going to sell me two pounds of crystal meth. And I just like to think that like, that wasn't a role. That was just Tom Sizemore. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Tom Sizemore, what are you doing here? <laughs> like he was just on, a, he was just on the set, like, like on like a different set, blundered into theirs. And he was like, you motherfuckers, I was trying to buy meth. You blew it. Why are you fucking doing a movie right now? I got a meth deal in five minutes. Get the fuck yeah. Out of here! Get that camera I told out my, my guy I was gonna meet him here. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, when Tom Sizemore is the guy that's on his shit, you are totally off base, dude. Oh like, yeah. When, when yep. he's telling you what procedure is, you're a fucking asshole. And he's furious, right? Because he's like, look, I've been undercover for months. My wife's got me sleeping at the fucking Ramada. You just saw me when this when this scene started. The camera <laughs> caught me pouring beer into a bowl of Cheerios for breakfast, <laughs> which is great. That is an what? awesome little detail. Ha- I have to ask, has anybody tried that? No. Uh, uh, tomorrow, no. I will. <laughs> I, I, I did when I was, because I was you stupid. Did. Yeah, I today? was. I mean, not today. <laughs> No, this is you back were stupid like in my or you were a genius. Uh, no, I was very stupid. Okay, so this is run it down. Chris Cabin, run it down. How was it? Terrible. I, uh, all, no? Absolutely garbage. And what like, kind of Cheerios are you, you talking about here? It was a Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh, actually. that's better off. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. growing up and being at a friend's house and his mother was, they didn't have milk and she was like, just put orange juice in it. I'm like, Jesus what? Christ. what? Did, you, did you call what? fucking CPS on that? I tried and they hung up on me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just it, it was I, I just had seen it on like multiple movies and like it's supposed to be like, look, this is what the cool guy does. And I was like, yeah, Let's give it a shot. And it was uh, awful. you should try it now. You're older now. Maybe your palate maybe. is yeah, my, 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 my taste is better. I, I do have the lawnmower is like this should be the finale of any other movie because it's point break. It's at minute 29. You know what I mean? Like It's just sort of like we're going to we got other we got other shit happening. The only other time you see shit like this happen in Mini 29 is in like a fucking Argento movie. Or yes, something. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the fact that uh, Pappa shows up to rescue Johnny Utah from half an inch, his face is a half an inch from being yeah. shredded, and instead of just shooting War Child in the fucking head, <laughs> he does some Annie Oakley shit where he shoots the motor of the fucking, uh, of the mower? Yes. What, what, what is, what is, how do you have, it? that's, a, that's just, you're asking for him to get owned right there. You're yeah, asking yeah. for his face to get turned into bullion aids. No, it's and it's loss. You're adding a lawsuit to everything else that fucked up today. Because now you got <laughs> to replace true. the goddamn <laughs> gas, my mower, motherfucker. The gas mower got to fucking be replaced. This is the only one of these if it, of its kind. <laughs> it's a mower that has a fucking a motor for some reason. This guy's the a neighbor big. comes out. He's just like, what the fuck? That was a prototype. <laughs> yeah, he's an inventor, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, next to this neo-Nazi house, it's just a house with a wacky inventor. He's 50 years, like, Papa's 50 years old, probably hungover, probably filled, like, he probably ate, like, uh, uh, three gallons of stew right before the parade or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I, I'm, I'm going to go for a trick shot here. <laughs> what do you trust your guy so much? You're like, oh, if I do the trick shot, then he'll punch War Child, and then I'll say, good job, kid, as opposed to, I don't know, everything, maybe the thing explodes and kills them both. Right. I don't know what's up. Busey putting the, the gun in Warchild's face that was great. He's like, speaking into the microphone, squid brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking awesome. Well, uh, and the, the, Sizemore, uh, the Tom Sizemore thing also tells you like how fucking stupid the goddamn FBI is. They didn't talk to the DEA. Yes. I mean, I know this is the era of like, oh, the fucking FBI, the FBI doms the police department the, or the, yeah. and the CIA or the DEA doms the FBI. Yeah. And I I get that, but I'm like, you you fucked this up. You didn't talk yeah. to anybody about what this was. They should and have like, been fired after this. Like, no yes. question. Yep. Yes. Like, everyone, oh, John C. McGinley, he's such a jerk. The fact that they weren't fired 
uh, proves that he's not. He had every right and justification to do so. Well, it's like, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, like the day after Waco, they're still looking for fucking those those dudes are still like looking for Christian fundamentalists. Like, no, no, you're on another fucking case, dude. <laughs> like, you, you <laughs> fucked this one up just enough. You've got to go to the other state. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, they put, well, Keanu puts it together in the best way possible here. They go for another, it's an early morning swim or surf and they're going down to the beach and James LaGrosse is like making some joke and he moons them yeah. and he remembers the security footage of James LaGrosse mooning them in the yes. bank robbery. And he's like, oh my God, I'd know that ass <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> the, ex, the, ex, the ex president's literally showing their ass and blowing yes. it. <laughs> And the word go and the word ghost. That's the thing yeah. that really oh, triggers it. Is, is which sh- makes no fucking yeah. sense. That's that's a dumb one. The ass one, I mean, is also stupid, but at least it's the same ass. Yeah. It's and also you, you remember an ass. The ghost thing, yeah. she's like, What? We, you look like you've seen a ghost. And then of course you have to see but she's like, These guys are ghosts. Remember everybody? <laughs> remember being at five? Been at five remember when I fucking said important. ghost. I said the word ghost. <laughs> and then Keanu's really terrible, uh, or Utah rather is really terrible here at cover. He's like uh, I just forgot I have a meeting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> First meeting with a client. Uh, 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 in It's uh, sports law. That's where <laughs> we're going back to it. So I'm meeting with like, a goalie right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's tailing him for a little bit. There's a weird thing here. Did you catch when Keanu's like, oh, yeah, I followed him all over the place. He got lunch at Patrick's Roadhouse. Of course. Uh, oh, all right. Little, little, little Here, here's my question, though. Go. I don't know if you guys um, remember seeing this movie for the first time, but I'm wondering, um, I wasn't, but was anyone who watched this movie for the first time ever shocked to find out that Swayze and his crew were actually the ex-presidents? <laughs> <laughs> there's no other so. way the movie could work. I yeah. mean, no, I mean, like, it, 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 it's it, the, the way they set it up, like, you know, War Child and Anthony mm-hmm. Kiedis is being sure, a little right. bit of the, the, the misdirection or whatever, but like, what, what did you think? Patrick Swayze is going to help him stop the yeah. surfing crimes? No. <laughs> it's also like a kind of a bad misdirection because you know those guys aren't organized yeah, they're, enough they're, they're to pull it off. Yeah. I think the first time I saw this movie, someone had explained it to me as, oh, it's a movie where Keanu Reeves infiltrates a surfer gang who's bank robbing and Patrick's. And so I think I knew yeah. all of that going in. So it was like spoiled or whatever beforehand. <laughs> but I like, mean, when you go in and like the first fucking the, the Reagan comes in and the, I hear Patrick Swayze say something I'm like, oh, that's Patrick Swayze. <laughs> like, it's just you can't do anything about it. The idea that the next morning he, you know, he explains to Pappas like, "Hey, I, this is the guys. They happen to be my best friends." But uh, the, you know, it actually be <laughs> fucking around for this entire movie actually worked out. Um, and the fact that he is the guy that is st- uh, staking this out again absolutely should not be because they know their your name, your address, and your fucking social security <laughs> number, dude. Like anyone else needs to be at this fucking stakeout. It's ten thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just on the city street, mm-hmm. clear as day. <laughs> you know, everyone can fucking you're see. You're walking you. down to buy lunch in front of the <laughs> bank. Okay, what is this Gary Busey thing? He's he's like when the scene starts, he's like, oh, Calvin and Hobbes. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we like- need to talk about that because obviously, as a kid, like me and my friends would do the Utah. Give me two. Yeah. Give me yeah. like that was just like you know in in our everyday you know discourse and and conversation we would find a way yeah. to work that in. Of course. Somehow I had totally forgot that the scene opens with him guffawing like a maniac <laughs> at the Sunday funnies and saying, "Man, that Calvin and Hobbes is funny." And I'm just like, he's just looking at it like and no, and then right at the end, like right before like the they see the bank robbery, he's still looking at the fucking funnies and he just goes, "Ha ha ha ha!" And then he just goes, "Oh boy." He's like fucking looking at he's looking at family circus or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, Marmaduke, he's too big. God damn. Utah, you wouldn't believe what Dilbert's up to this week. And honestly, I gotta say, I, I thought Utah get me too is the iconic line of this movie. But like watching it now the, for the on, on this viewing, it's 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 for me, it's man that Calvin and Hobbes is funny. <laughs> I think Busey is doing some sort of like Busey improv at yeah, the end of sure. that because yeah. it, it's like he's supposed to be, I guess, reading the punch line of a com uh, a strip that we don't see because he's like oh, turkey cemetery <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about cow dude? tools that don't make no sense <laughs> officer down officer down yeah yeah anyway i think gasoline alley is totally underrated uh, kathy wants chocolate again <laughs> he just starts in on a far side book too yeah. just, he's, 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 he hasn't had enough 
Mm -hmm. Oh my God, those cows are at the bank. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I do. It's a great moment of character distinction where Keanu goes to get a a, a tuna on toast. You know what I mean? A a real adult's breakfast or on wheat. On wheat. Of course. Wheat. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Two lemonades, too. 10 30 in the morning lemonade. I don't know about that either. I, I, I know it's supposed to be like a sandwich shop, but it has more of the look of like a place where you just get hamburger, hot dogs, and fries. I was going to yeah, say like a food they stand, had a tuna, and wheat on like Well, what? it's asking you to suspend disbelief for that moment. <laughs> I, I don't. I will not. <laughs> I love the shot, though, when he's at the food stand placing the order and we kind of just do a little pan right and you see the car pull up which is really great. great. So Keanu's back is too. And so he doesn't yes. see them pull up another p- piece of stellar police work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The only thing we're supposed to do during this entire day is watch this fucking bank. Well, it's realistic. I'm only right? going to go get some treats. I'm going to turn my back away from the bank. Uh, and basically yeah. act like it isn't there. We were eating. Sorry about the crime. <laughs> and mean, then, like- uh, by the way, Another thing I noticed is Utah, he's ordering his tuna on whole wheat and, and the two meatball subs. And like, okay, like it's a, it's a great moment. Like he's turned around, he's making the order. The car pulls up, the ex-presidents pile out, with guns drawn, run into the bank. Utah then turns around and what does he see? An empty car idling in front of a bank. <laughs> yeah, that's and then he, what does he do? He goes right back to the car with Busey and he's like, here's your sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to report. And uh, yours is the one that looks like a roadkill, which I th- <laughs> I think is a botched Keanu line because then Gary Busey kind of makes fun of him and he's like, oh, a roadkill. <laughs> and I think it just got left in, which is sort of nice. Here's he your gets- sandwich. You've been buried in, you've been buried in that newspaper. Functionally, both of our eyes have been closed this entire time. <laughs> Why even Excellent. be there? Why yes. even be there? He gets like two bites into this meatball sub. He's yes. like. Maybe we should check it out. Uh Uh-oh, they're coming out. Shit. Oh, fuck. Fuck. And then then you know the meatball sub is going all over Busey. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That shirt is ruined. That shit. They've got marinara down there thing. But so they've they've leave the bank and uh, like any good law enforcement officer in America, Keanu just starts firing down the street at the fucking car. (laughs) Smart move. The the second you scream FBI, you need to start thinking about subletting the apartment you showed these guys. Like that's that's in the back, you know, definitely you're looking for headshots, but you're like, all right. So if I maybe if I go down down the beach a little bit, you know, you have to move. You have to move. And we get a nice little chase scene here. First in the car, they Great try to ditch scene. the car at a gas station, which is awesome. Oh my god! I love so uh, Swayze I say, just lighting his fucking car on fire. Yeah, the scene where he's like, "We have to do some uh, what does he say? Um, emergency uh, like uh, trash disposal or something like that." Uh, yeah. So like, uh, he's like, he's, he first of all, he douses the gas station attendant with gasoline and then breaks out a Zippo, <laughs> and he's like, "Don't do it, man! Don't do yep. it!" Then he uses the Zippo to light the nozzle on the gas pump, and then just sprays this fucking beautiful just arc of flame into this fucking car and when I first saw this movie like you know as a kid I was so blown away by this scene because I was like wow gas stations are everywhere I've even used a gas pump <laughs> but like if you if you were sufficiently committed every gas station is just a flamethrower store too that's <laughs> true <laughs> I mean, but that's why Bigelow is fantastic is she takes the time to show how gorgeous and insane and chaotic this is. And a lot of yep. action movies just wouldn't have that moment of like mm-hmm. a, an inventive gasoline flamethrower. Yep. And as, another as, thing I really want to credit uh, Bigelow for in this scene is like it's the car chase. But then there is one of the rare, very successful and very thrilling foot chases absolutely. in a movie. Because yes. usually a foot chase in a movie kind of grinds the action to a halt. They never really work, in my opinion. Whereas this is like very claustrophobic. It's exciting. Why does it work? Because there's a ton of property damage and a ton of dumbass civilians getting their shit owned. Right. Like yep. that, that's, that's the mark of a good action movie is I, that in the midst of all the mayhem of a car chase, they take time to show innocent civilians also suffering and or dying. <laughs> yes. And the whole steady cam, and you're running down those corridors. It is fantastic. On the gas nozzle thing, me and my brother, as, as children, kind of reacted. Tried this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we filled, not at a gas station, we filled oh, okay. up a Miracle Grow like spray uh, thing with gas and set it on fire, and it worked. And I, awesome. we, we somehow didn't die, which is. Wow. <laughs> I think there's a pretty cool. There's a reality where I'm actually dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> Touched by God, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so much of that foot chase is successful because, you know, 
parts of it look different. Mm-hmm. You know, Will, like you were saying, they encounter different people. There's different houses they go in. So parts of it are memorable. So you can say like, oh yeah, there's the hilarious part where the lady is hitting him in the head with the vacuum cleaner, screaming like, <laughs> get the fuck out of my head. Like you remember parts of it. It's not just like, and then I jumped over that fence. Dude, well, somebody and he jumped they, over that fence. Because Catherine Bigelow took the time to storyboard throwing a fucking dog at somebody. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Ah. And speaking of Matthew Broderick, someone should have thrown one at Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of car accidents in Matthew Broderick. Well, yes. yes. That's true. <laughs> that, dude is, that, that dude is a murderer. You yeah, totally sure. Right. So, yeah, the aftermath of this whole, you know, shit show is Busey's like, hey, uh, I don't want to be a dick or nothing, but I think you made friends with these surfers. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit, dude. And he's the only one who's like, maybe you should not be as close to this as you are. And that whole discussion lasts two seconds. But again, when you when you do the thing, Keanu, when you bust his knee up, because we know that his knee's busted and he does the uh, much parody in Pot Fuzz, shoot at the sky bit. Oh, sure. You cannot return. You're at the Ramada, dude. Yeah, that's you're it. just at the fucking yep. Ramada. You're burned. <laughs> yes, they're, you're done. They're, they're they're reassigning you to the Omaha office to check <laughs> yeah. fraud. You're done. <laughs> well, I, I I don't even know what the reasoning is. Is the reasoning because they think that he might not know, like that? How Bodie would he not know? Know? I don't know? I don't know. <laughs> he looks back. There's like they look at each other. <laughs> He knows that that's him. How would he not also know that, that he knows that it's also him? I was now like you. I was having similar conniptions at the television when Bodie and his crew, you know, after the botched bank robbery, yeah. come into his fucking apartment. They're like, come on, dude, let's go. Let's go hang out. No, like, what happened? Like, Did they yep. miss a reel? What happened here? <laughs> they're going to so, kill him. Like, obviously, I would I'm, like, I'm like, Keanu, what are you doing? Like, your cover is blown at this point. Yes. Like, they know you're not being like, get away. They're going to murder you. Yeah. But then yeah. I thought in the back, they're like, don't worry, we're not surfing. Then in the back of my mind, I know Keanu, Johnny Utah in the back of his head is thinking like, there's a good chance. Well, there's a hundred percent chance my cover's blown, but there's a very good chance they're going to murder me if I go to a second location with them. But what? Just hear me out for a second. <laughs> I've never been skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> what if these guys? I mean, it'd be a real thrill. And you know what? It pays off because it was awesome. Well, I, yeah. I, I would be kicking myself <laughs> if I said yeah. no to Bodie yeah. and missed a trip to skydive. It, well, this, I mean, and it's also very. I mean, clearly, I mean, it would be very hard to. Fake a, a, a death going out of a skydive. I mean, how would you <laughs> yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. It would be so, I mean, hard. I mean, how do you do it? This initial skydive is like the movie forgot that they wanted the climax of the film to have skydiving in it. And then they're like, <laughs> shit, maybe we'll set that in the morning then. Like, because like to do two skydives in a row like this kind of is insane. Like, you kind of do want that peppered in a little earlier. And then it's like, oh, remember when they went skydiving? It's like, hey, remember when they went skydiving in the morning? Well, they're doing it again in the early <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. They and do this hot is- potato with the parachutes. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Um, that's right. fun. And that this was the night that uh, Laurie Petty finds his badge and does yes. the whole Goodfellas scene with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love her shooting the pillow. That's oh, by the way, awesome. I, I, I love like, but, you know, but before she discovers he's an FBI agent, he's like, I have something to tell you. And I really <laughs> think it could affect our relationship. And I'm like, you think? Yes. <laughs> you think? And then she's like, she's like, don't worry. You can tell don't me worry. another time. <laughs> well, I, I'll say I'm very happy that the scene like she runs away and he tries to go after her. And you see a very clearly a Keanu butt. It's fantastic. Yeah, sure. yep. It's very yep. nice. Because once again in this movie, they are both freshly fucked. Wonderful. Right. They are. Um, <laughs> and then speaking of the, uh, the the skydiving scene where they all, they all you know, it's one of the many um, great moments of homoeroticism in this movie. Mm-hmm. But they like, they all, they all fall together and hold hands. Yes. And they're like, yes, yes, this is awesome. This is, <laughs> feels so good. <laughs> Catherine walked into the room and she said, if you're, if you're just, li- I was, she was in the other room and she goes, if you're just listening to this movie and not watching it, it sounds like they're having sex. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like gay porn. <laughs> totally. Get in. The, he says something like, uh, what's the line? He's like, get oh, in there, up. Utah, get in there. <laughs> Hit that <laughs> hole. Slap that hole. Wow, I they got quite the circle jerk in the sky. <laughs> I kind of want the internal monologue of like, you know what? This is actually working out. I think they they didn't see me yesterday. They actually did not see me fire upon them. Cool, I keep playing both angles and also skydiving rules. <laughs> yeah, but it, now it, I'm is, an it is sexual. It was reminding me a little bit like autoerotic asphyxiation just because you're actively dying when you jump out of a plane and you pull sure. a cord. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, true. there you go. <laughs> there you go. But, dude, yeah. with skydiving uh, v autoerotic asphyxiation, the difference is... Sometimes you could use one, a belt. Well, <laughs> There's yes, a lot of choices. Really. No, I was just going to say, one, with, with the skydiving, you really got to jerk that cord, you know, mm. to get the shoot out. Yeah, yeah. With autoerotic asphyxiation, you got to play it a little safer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to jerk that dick. really. At the same time. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, this, um, so they land and this is where uh, it, Bodhi is like, I'm so sorry, brother. I kidnapped your girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, and uh, I put her. Uh, well, Rosie's <laughs> in charge of her. He's probably killed her already. But no, wait, you know, I, to say when the compliment you can give a man that you've worked with for a couple of years now is he has a gift of blankness. <laughs> yeah. that's, awesome. that's probably not I also great. like I also Put like that when one Bodhi in the letter of the, recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> I also like when Bodie he's like, okay, come here. He's like, I got something to show you. And he's like, oh, okay, what is it? Is it more extreme sports? And he's like, no. It's uh and he goes, it's an insurance policy. And he goes, Look, it's gonna sting, but it's all part of your self-growth problem. No, it's gonna help you with your self-growth problem. And I just yeah. love like this is this is the 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 guru, this is the spiritual yes. psychopath. Yeah, and I that's mean, why I think Bodhi is such a good villain in this movie. Totally. He was definitely a life coach in Australia in the in the, in the intervening nine months. You know what I mean? Oh, Just, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Lori Petty makes a Moon and Night reference at one point. She calls all the rest of the dudes uh, Bodhi's Moonies, oh, which yeah. I thought was kind of funny. I love this tape. Like when he turns on the fucking security tape or whatever it is, it just looks like a video from Saw. Yeah. Like, hello, <laughs> hello, Utah. You know? He's just like, what? Because she's like tied to the chair. She's gagged. Lee Turgeson looking fucking creepy as hell in the background. Like, yeah, it's a good torture. But you know, he also oh, I want to play a game, an extreme <laughs> game, <laughs> an X game, if you will. <laughs> hey, Johnny, you ever ride a BMX bike down a ramp before? <laughs> <laughs> you will now. Uh, Bodie does have a good line there, and it's a great question too. Of like, why be a servant to the law when you can be its master? Mm, that's right, right. Great good question. Point. Hey, he's asking all the really important questions. He is. Man. To which I think, because that's when they're in the van and, you know, Utah's like, huh, but Bodie, I am an FBI <laughs> <Yeah>. agent. <laughs> Great fucking well, line. Well, yeah, I knew that. I've known that for quite some time now. Thank Dude, you. Dude, I, I don't know. Yesterday we got we got that scrape, if you remember, where you were firing a gun at me. Yeah, I kind of guessed that you were an FBI agent at that point as well. Uh, you know, yeah. I was on that fence and I got my pant caught on the fence, you know, and then you were going to shoot me and we were both looking at each other. But then you didn't. Uh, yeah, so, I knew it was you. So now, with you know, with the threat of um, the mechanism hanging over Lori Petty's head, <laughs> he basically, um, you know, they, but like this is not just like he because they have, you know, James LeGrow had a fucking bead on Keanu and he like bats yeah. the gun out of the way. He's like, no. Because he's found a kindred spirit, you know. The rest of his, mm. the rest of these goofies, mm -hmm. they may like to get radical, but they don't yep. have the uh, the spiritual connection or hotness of Keanu Reeves. So, like he's he's this is like he wants to mentor him into a life of spiritual crime, and he's going to force him to take part in the ultimate rush, which is breaking federal bank <laughs> bank <laughs> robbery laws. Oh yeah, <laughs> without a mask. Yeah. And, okay, yes. so like he makes him do the last bank robbery, where they foolishly, for the first time ever choose to hit the vault instead of hitting, just hitting the cash registers. You're breaking um, your own rules! <laughs> he gets, like, there's an undercover cop there. He gets, like, Carter and Lyndon Johnson killed. I mean, it's like, it goes really bad. But, okay, I know we talked earlier, like, they fucked up the raid brilliantly. They blew three months' work from the DEA, killed a bunch of fucking innocent people. It went really bad. So, like, after the bank robbery, like, Utah's in cuffs, and McGinley's like, put, keep those cuffs on him. And I'm like, okay, at this point in the movie, how the fuck does Keanu Reeves get his job with the <laughs> FBI back? Nope. No. Because, like, question. McGinley's like, okay, like, your partner, he's an accessory to murder. Like, a cop got killed in the middle of this. Like, the yeah. circumstances that led up to it, like, really don't matter. He's like, oh, I was only, un I was only taking part in this <laughs> bank robbery because I skydived with them. It was really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's like We're he's brothers. still a fucking fed at the end of this movie. What happened in like between Australia? Uh, here's what it is. Well, I think I know what it is because what happens is the end of the movie, um, you know, they're in the office and everything, and John C. McGinley's like, All right, now the last time, why did you participate in this bank robbery that got a cop killed? And he just goes, Uh 
because I'm an FBI agent? <laughs> and they go, oh, wait, of course, you're a fellow cop. Oh, you can still I thought he was Absolutely. just cans. <laughs> I, do, I, I mean, thought I just shot cans. <laughs> is there a least a least likable character than this under this cop that's off duty? I mean, you <laughs> an every asshole. time this dude yep. gets three in the chest, you're like, fucking finally. Good. Like, it, it's him and that old lady in speed that gets her, her shit blown up. Oh, yeah, up yeah, yeah, get blown up. Uh, full of, it goes Beth, straight under the wheels right of the oh police. Yeah. Yeah. Beth yep. Grant's yes, yes, awesome. Yes. Yes. Okay, another she went under the wheels. just brilliant, brilliant Catherine Bigelow moment in this movie is that when Bodhi takes it upon himself, to just finally draw down on that fucking cop with his huge, like, Colt pistol. And he bl- shoots him in the chest, and you get a brilliant squib moment, but then you get to see his body slide back on the bank marble floor oh, yeah. for, like, three yes. or four yards. That's so just yeah. Yeah. Skirt! Like, just, just pu- yank the force of that fucking bullet hitting his chest just pushes him across the perfectly smooth <laughs> bank floor. It's so good. I do feel bad, though, for the security guard, because he has clearly had no interest yeah. in any of that <laughs> yep. smoke. Yes. Yep. And this yes. asshole cop is like, oh, cop, you gotta cover me. You gotta back me up. He's like, don't do it. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm literally getting minimum wage here. This is not worth my life. I can go be a greeter at Walmart, man, if they fire me. There's right. no reason for like, me to do this. Man, yep. I know these guys, like from other bank security guys, they're in and out in 90 seconds to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think it would have been funny. Just wait. If instead of him po- going for it, be like, fuck it, let's be legends, and then getting murked, if he had just, like, stayed down. Yes. <laughs> I told you not to do that, idiot. <laughs> or or if he just calls them out, like, dude, this guy's got a gun. This hey, guy's got a gun this over here. <laughs> I'm helping. I- I need fucking an MCU style stinger of watching that cop burn in hell because that guy fucks everything up and he's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. I love that he's he's basically trying to tell the security guard that they're in the exact same position because he's like, look, I got a gun on my belt that I can easily just slide my hand across my stomach and reach. You got a gun on your ankle, right? And the guy's like, yeah, and I'm also a big fat guy. Like, what the fuck do you think I can sort of slyly do here to get this weapon off my ankle? Come on. I'm 58 years old, <laughs> sir. <laughs> what do you Just want from me? Just look at me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, this the, the youngest dude gets killed here. as, as well. Oh, Gromit? Yeah, Gromit. Little, little Gromit gets it. Um, <laughs> and I, that, There was something in the Wikipedia that suggested that he's the younger brother of Bodie. And like I guess Cody I calls him younger call, brother. Yeah, younger, he keeps uh, on he, saying that. He says brother, but that but could I just be like a term of endearment that. among that's yeah, yeah, I was, types. I figured you know, it was they're that. all brothers. Yeah, they, they're they're brothers of the wave. <laughs> yes, that's right. right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he does look but, younger than him. So <laughs> yeah, and he uh, because he loves him so much, Swayze still refuses to kill Utah. So he uh, brings him to the airport, or oh no, actually no, he leaves him in the. Uh, Leaves him in the bank, and this is what he they gets to punch. Yeah, he gets to punch out John C. McGinley and another uh, strike against him. Buse, no, Busey, Busey punches does him. It, yeah. Oh, that's right. He goes, and then uh, takes you know, this guy who should be under in custody. Yep. This guy <laughs> yes. who should be under arrest, and just this takes guy, him and takes the cuffs off. This leaves. kid needs to be. Yeah. In, he needs to be in a fucking in, a, in an interrogation room with his union rep. That's the yep. next scene of this <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. movie. <laughs> it is I'm not such a, like because Busey's like, what is it? He's like, oh, John C. McGinley. Like, come on. Don't take him out of here in a black and white. Like, let me take him. I'll give him a ride to the police no, station. Take him out with the put. Uh, put him in a black and white and have SWAT fucking yes trucks <laughs> next to it. Like, <laughs> fucking. What are you talking about? This person put a fucking hood killed. over his head. I know you got one. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't understand it. Uh, but yeah, he does the uh, uh, Judge Reinhold Eddie Murphy at the end of Beverly Hills Cop. He's just like. Well, I guess I'm gonna do this. <laughs> he lets him go, and you have to you have to imagine John C. McGinley cackling when he finds out that Pappas got shot at an airfield. Yes, day, yep, right. That's Absolutely. what you get. <laughs> That's yep. what you get. <laughs> Just Robert De Niro, Cape Fear, Cape Fear, laughing about this fucking <laughs> dead Absolutely. fake Greek Italian. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is the airfield scene. It's a big shootout. Um, James LaGrosse gets fucking Gary Busey in the back with a shotgun. Ooh, Oof. that stings. Blow. It's awesome. Blow. <laughs> <laughs> and again, great. they're so they're so bad at their jobs. They just show up and they're like, and then at one point Keanu's like, where's the other guy with you? And he's like, oh, I don't know. He's around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he literally says, oh, he's around here. <laughs> they just, it's so they're so unprepared for everything they do. 
you should, should be combing the area a little That's, bit, like just being they didn't like, tell right. anybody else. They <laughs> knew where these guys were, and they didn't tell anyone else. I've got There's... my back facing a warehouse. Hopefully, he's not in there. <laughs> a person I just shot. Like, what, what, uh, you don't even check your six. Like, what the no. fuck? Yeah, he gets. Oh he yeah, gets no, him. I shot this guy once in the side with my fucking thirty-two fucking snub nose. I'm sure he's out for the count. He's gone. <laughs> this young man, this this young man who is athletic all day and all of the night. <laughs> uh, they dragged him what? into the play. I, I do. I want to know what this pilot thought he was signing up for versus what he got. <laughs> this guy, it's a real like what. What the fuck did you think? It's a bachelor party. We just want to fly over Mexico really quick. <laughs> sure. I mean, this is like shots hey, being hey, fired. Hey, hey, can you take me and my friends to Tijuana but fly <laughs> um, under radar the entire way there? <laughs> All right, that's it. Shots fired. I'm not taking to San Felipe or whatever the, the town name is. All right. Oh, that's right. He tries to refuse a couple times. Yes. Again. You get the fuck back in that plane. All it. right. I was ready for one dead body, but this is three. <laughs> I can't do this. Busey has a cartoonish death rattle of right here he too. It's so, but it's just like he's like he tries to say something, and it's not. We're not even bothering with any kind of last words of motivation or anything like that. And it's a really prolonged like. Eh. <laughs> I love it so much. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't quote uh, extensively from Marmaduke uh, before. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my favorite cartoon hound always used to say. It's like, you know, yeah, I like it. was like, you know, uh, uh, like, fucking like a uh, dumb, dumb round buckshot just like rips through his back. And then he's just like, oh, I hate Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been in a different draft. Yeah. You know? Doc, get me lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> two, two lasagnas. <laughs> Uh, so we're on the plane. James LaGrosse is really dying here. Oh, uh, yeah. I do. I always love this. Uh, Keanu Reeves literally is like, you're getting cold because the blood is getting out of your body, Roach. You'll be dead soon. Was it worth it? Yeah. Uh, my so name kind is of, kind of badass. My name is Terrence, by the way. It's the, <laughs> yeah, don't call but, me Roach while I'm dying. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, yeah I, know, I know that I smoked that Roach that one time and everybody thought it. it was hysterical 12 years ago. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I so have what, he's dying. Uh, they, 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 Swayze chucking this half his half dead friend out and getting a legitimate "I'll see you in hell" out is one of my dreams. But you have that's to great. be in a near death situation. You, you, you can't just. You'll say be it. there soon. Yeah, that's a good point. I think it's a thing where, like, you know, Roach has thought about mm -hmm. what he's going to do with his final moments when they ever come. You know, so he has this well rehearsed. Like, whoever's doing it to me. I'm going to tell him I'll see you in hell. <laughs> it's a good Even move, if it's man. a wave. And I mean, like, the see you in hell and then immediately chucked out of a plane yeah. to die in midair, probably. Yeah. yeah. That's that's about as good a line delivery as you can get when you're bleeding to death about about to fall out of a fucking airplane. Yeah, see you in hell is a pretty good, pretty appropriate at that Apparently, moment. Apparently, he survives enough to pull the chute, but then yes. when they see his body on the ground, it's yeah. just dead, which which is nice detail. I like that yeah. shot with all the money scattering like yes. that. That was pretty good. Yeah. But uh, the bigger thing is, so fucking Bodhi says that does the uh, what is it? Adios amigo. Adios amigo. Yes. Adios amigo goes out, and then of course Keanu Reeves follows him. And he catches him in midair, and they they pull the pair at the very last minute. He has a gun to his fucking head. Yeah, six like seconds. Same. We're gonna be meat waffles. And, and he's like counting down. And he's like, fine, fucking fine. And he drops the gun, pulls the shoot. They both drop immediately on the ground. It's a hard fall. The knee needs yeah. to look like spaghetti. Yeah, yeah like there's nothing I, left I, there. I, I need a pie or something. Like it just, it, it, you can't walk anymore. If if you had a bad knee before, you do not have a knee anymore now. He should be on that beach in Australia using a cane or something. Mm, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Just a, a metal leg. One or, of those, you, you know, know put the... him into the RoboCop program. <laughs> exactly. That would work. Also something I would watch. Uh, Johnny Utah bot. Totally. Yeah. They, they, let, uh, they let Rosie. They, uh, Rosie shows up. They let uh, Tyler out. And Tyler, like, rushes to him like, oh, I love you so much. Just like, no, fuck you, dude. Yeah, fuck you just, here. yeah I'd you still be pretty mad at him. I'd be yeah. pretty mad. Hey, remember when you used my parents' fucking death against me to get me in, the, in bed? <laughs> sure. I've been thinking about that for the last 36 hours, motherfucker. Hey, uh, remember, remember you lying to me and uh, <laughs> seducing me? Um, got me inadvertently kidnapped by a psychopath who was <laughs> held me at knife point. But the in motion in the ocean was just yeah. that good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was just best yeah. sex. Best yes. sex ever. I don't know. Steve, I don't know. Like when you find yourself in the desert, 
you know, uh-huh. and uh, uh, the people that you're with are the dude who kidnapped you. Yes. Another guy who, you know, was in on it, uh-huh. a dead body. And this dude who was admittedly kind of an asshole, but didn't actually kidnap you, even though he was definitely responsible for it. Yeah. You'll probably run to Keanu. Yeah. And I guess he's also a 10. So that, that changes things. The math a little <laughs> oh, bit. Oh, that certainly helps. And she's like, oh, finally the police, but we're in Mexico. So this means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and all that brotherly love that you were talking about, Will, like it, it evaporate because he, tw- it happens like two times in the bank. Uh, they're like, you cannot bring Gromit with us. You have to mm-hmm. leave him here yep. to be chucked in the wagon and turned into grist or burnt or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then here, uh, when uh, I, I get James LaGrosse, it's like, you can hear it. it's like off, but you don't. He's like, we have to bury him. We have to. Yes. do. It's like usual suspects. Uh <laughs> And, and Swayze wants to bury him. And right? then, and the mechanism is like, no, we can't. We have to go. So like the mechanism that, is the one who runs the show. That is why he is the mechanism, yeah. dude, because Swayze tries to veer off course and fuck around burying uh, James LaGrosse here, Roach. And he's like, no, no, no. The mechanism says we got to go. Let's get in the car and go. He seems pretty depressed about it, though. Yeah. I mean, even when we get to <laughs> Bell's Beach, it, he oh, seems sure. pretty down. Well, on well, that's what I like about it. It's like when we, when we finally get to Bell's Beach at the end and Keanu's like, you know, like they, they encounter each other. He throws the Reagan mask into the surf and he, he's like, it's over, Bodie. You crossed the line. People <laughs> lost their lives. They're dead. And then like you, you get the perfect distillation of Bodie's like sort of a Zen uh, crime spiritualism. Where he was like, yeah, it got bad. Got real bad, but you know, <laughs> doesn't mean I can't catch this wave though. You know, so it's all yep. about it's all about the surf. It's all about communing with nature, and it's like, dude, you got like all your friends killed, all yes. of them yes. dead. And your best friend, yeah, but that's just it. He, I, in my read of the scene, he had every intention of dying in the yep. surf anyway, which is one more notch in the belt of terrible police officer for fucking <laughs> yeah, letting him do that. He caught no one. If he had not showed up on the beach with all those Australian cops, the same thing would have happened. Yes. Right. Exactly. He would have won out and he would have died on the way. And he's so and all he did was cost the Australian taxpayers like a hundred grand for all the helicopters and machine guns they had to get out there for nothing. And then of course they got to hire a fucking dive team to go and scoop his ass out of the ocean. That's exactly what would have happened if he'd never done anything. He didn't catch and he's- anybody. Fucking Rosie got like, stabbed in a bar in Mexico. All he could do is identify yes. the body afterwards. But he's, yeah. he he arrives in Baja too late. That guy's dead. He misses Bodhi in Fiji by a week. <laughs> Who the fuck's paying for all this? It's a great question, dude. <laughs> and yeah, like, and to Matt to Matt's point, he's like, he's like, you got too far, Bodhi. Like, I mean, yeah, like this guy's a mass murderer. He's like a dangerous yes. criminal psychopath. And he's like, He's like, come on, Utah. He's like, you know, I can't handle like being in a cage. It's like, dude, yeah, I know. Like, that's that's the point. No one likes it. But I mean, you're a murderer. Like, so yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to have this like perfectly beautiful heroic death that you've planned your entire life, evading capture the entire time for your lengthy criminal career. But I mean, at that point, he's just, I don't know, an FBI agent in name only. I mean, the fact that he's not in jail is pretty stunning. And then he, he got, got to let this got guy to go. go. He got to he got to take a nine month like semester at sea, courtesy of the U.S. taxpayers, <laughs> and then quit after yeah. not apprehending the guy he was chasing. I do. I want they to should watch- send his ass a bill <laughs> and getting his partner blown away. Like, I want to also watch that. I want to watch worst uh, police officer I think in any film ever who was like trying <laughs> like other than guys who were like actively double Asian type guys. Yeah, the worst guy who was like ostensibly uh, on the level. The most incompetent, worst police officer on in film. Where at Quantico, like, and you are allowed to give the murderer one last request. It's yes. like, I want to go. I, I was, so, hey, dude, I know I was about. To, I'm, about I'm about to go in. Uh, the show in Batman Returns up the street. Do you mind if I just dip in there for two hours? I've always wanted to do it. Man. I love the. I will be. I'll, they'll go in the cage. I promise. The Australian cops yelling at him was great. <laughs> Like you let him go. What the fuck? What the fuck, you tall? You let him go. He's a little cross of the ocean now. <laughs> but you, yeah, he throws his badge dramatically. But like, no, you're still kind of getting arrested too. Because oh, yeah. like, what you're doing, you just aided and abetted a fucking criminal, dude. Yeah, that, that's yep. the thing. Yep. Again, <laughs> yeah, again, <laughs> like the tenth time. <laughs> He's not coming back. Or or maybe he is. I don't know, man. Maybe he'll fucking swim it. You know what I mean? Either way, doesn't work. Well, you just made a job for somebody else who now has to go get his ass out of the water at some yeah. point. He just has to convince 12 people to believe in a bromance. 
That's yeah. all he's got to do. <laughs> I love that he is the only FBI agent, and these are all like Australian cops at this mm-hmm. point, too. Oh yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, this. It's such a. I mean, it is. It's ridiculous, but it is. I think. Uh, the fact that they balance the silly, like that that's the thing I think Bigelow did a lot uh, uh, very well in the 80s and 90s is that she did balance the the silly stuff with stuff that's actually gripping and like compelling yeah. in a lot of ways. Like yeah. this is ridiculous that this is happening. It's obscene and ridiculous. But I'm still like I, I don't know, I'm with it. Like yeah. I'm still in It's totally the drama. watchable, yeah. Well, they, they yeah, play I it. I mean, and also like Swayze and Reeves as silly and dumb as they are, they play it pretty well. You know what I mean? They you do. believe Oh, they're great. They're great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you believe it. Yeah, I mean, Reeves does that whole thing. Will you were saying about the uh, 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 like how he's like, you killed somebody. You did. I'm like, yeah, we watched the movie. <laughs> it's like just wrapping things up. Let me remind you what the whole movie was, real quick. Uh, but that is the end of the movie. We end on a, a tune from Rat, of uh, which definitely means that this is not a great soundtrack. No. Um, yeah, that's a, that was a great point you made uh, at the top, Steve. Kind of weird that this soundtrack yeah. sucks so much. Not sucks, but it's just it's kind of just. Just really forget it. Cut a week, cut a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that is the end of Point Break uh, from 1991, directed by Catherine Bigelow. We'll go around here. Uh, final thoughts and any uh, maybe recommendations or something. We'll start with our guest today, uh, Will. Uh, my final thoughts is, you know, Point Break remains um, a classic action movie of the 90s. It's one of Catherine Bigelow's best movies. I'll just say it's a, you know, cautionary tale about, you know, some sports are too extreme, like like murder <laughs> and felony uh, theft. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I'll just say, like, the uh, movie to recommend, uh, Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark. I know Halloween's mm, over. So but good. Man, oh, man, what a fucking good vampire movie Near Dark is. Totally. Matt? Uh you know, Keanu Reeves, uh, one of the most amazing careers in film history, just because at no point has he ever been good at acting at all. He's never given a good performance. He has never conv- convincingly delivered a line. Mm-hmm. And yet you still want to watch him. You still accept him in the movies. You still sort of you, you grade him on a curve. And I, I, that just speaks to some ineffable charisma the man has. And uh, and it's certainly on display in this movie where he is objectively terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yet, nonetheless, uh, very magnetic. Uh, totally. And uh, you know what? Another movie I recommend. I just real. I was looking at that gun website. Uh, it's the uh, uh, Internet <laughs> Movie Firearms Database. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Got it. And, uh, the, the cool gun uh, that um, Swayze is carrying uh, is actually not a forty-four. It's a four fifty-four Casul, which at the time was the largest caliber handgun in commercial. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Wow. He's got a real god killer. Okay. Well, you know, now uh, which the... was yeah. also carried uh, by John Candy in the film uh, Armed and Dangerous with Eugene Ooh. Levy. Oh, oh yes. Uh, yes, classic. yes, yes, Also yes. about classic. a robbery gang, uh, but this time uh, armored cars instead of banks. It's delightful. Yeah. Check it out. Totally. Uh, Chris Cabin. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love this movie. I've loved this movie for years. Uh, I also, uh, a couple weeks ago, just because I hate myself, I decided to watch the remake. Oh, um, cool. yeah. oh nice. Ah, never did that. It is. <laughs> it is a mu- it's so fucking bad. It's like, they, they take all the silliness out, and it's just like good stunts, like footage, but not even cut together well. It's Who's the dude? Is it Edgar Ramirez? Yeah. Edgar Ramirez, Ramirez is Bodhi. Bodhi, yeah. And then yeah. some nobody is uh, 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 Keanu Reeves's part. Uh, and that's then what Del- you want. Delroy, Lind- Delroy Lindo is uh, uh, McGinley. Oh, um, oh interesting. He's, and he's that was good. Who's Pappas? He's a- <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Ray Winstone was Pappas. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Ray Winstone? Oh. Yeah, Wait, Ray is Winstone. it still surfing? No, it's it, uh, it's a Ray Winstone. Uh, yeah, Utah 4. Get me 4, Utah. <laughs> four four <laughs> eel pies. Hey, I need 4 eel pies right now. <laughs> oh, fuck it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I even so seeing that just double down how much I love this movie, how much it's just been there for my whole life. Mm. Yeah, can't recommend it enough. Eric Sisko. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, this movie's insanely watchable. I always have a good time whenever I do watch it. And Keanu Reeves, he does have that charisma. I have no idea why Matthew Perry wants him dead. Um, <laughs> what a prick. I know, That's right? such a shitty thing. And it's like Matthew Perry's talking about this like he's some fucking artist. Yeah. Who are you, dude? You're not even half as good as Keanu Reeves is. But in his defense, he finally made me laugh. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a recommend to watch the movie. Good one. 
<laughs> uh, Steve Sadak. Yeah, no, it's um, uh, it's fantastic. It's a it, you know, and again, like I think I would love to watch Catherine Bigelow make a breakneck action movie that like has as little politics as possible would be fantastic for her um and get her out of movie jail i also think that like it's to chris's point like it, the remake like i just don't think we make like movies where like because the beginning of this movie is keanu reeves patrick swayze very much like two young up-and-coming movie stars not people from cw series not people that you saw on netflix once like real deal people that open movies are now gonna face each other in some sort of a way and i just don't think that there's you could you could possibly when you remade this movie or you're gonna remake it again in five years we don't have the farm system we used to have yeah so there's no there's no world in which yep. you could make this movie again so it's nope. it's a bygone era yeah totally um and it's it's a huge crazy run for swayze too because i mean like 87 was Dirty Dancing, Roadhouse 89, mm-hmm. Ghost 90, and then this in 91. Like, dude, Damn. Just flying. Damn. It's crazy. I mean, and then Keanu kind of like the same-ish, you know, because like Speed was three years uh, after this and Bill and Ted had been before this. I think the first one anyway. Bogus Journey um, is this year. Yeah. Mm. It is it this year? year as, was Bogus as Journey as this year? Because, oh yeah, because Excellent Adventure is like 88 or something yeah, like that. So like, they're both kind of like right in this really interesting period of their career. And I'll just say, uh, another Keanu recommend is uh, the film River's Edge. Yes. With him, Great movie. Um, Crispin, Crispin Glover. Glover. Yep. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I own Sky. I think yeah, I'd at great, least rate a Michelob. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Also for Swayze, a uh, previous episode we've done, a uh, good Good fun movie, Next of Kin. Really? Oh, oh, I shit. love that I movie. Was say, I love Billy Cops in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh it's great. Um, but that is going to do it for this episode on Point Break. Uh, Will and Matt, thanks so much for for popping in. And you know, what do you guys got going on? Do you got more shows or what's happening? No more shows for the rest of the okay. year. Tour is over, but the show is where it always is on Patreon and SoundCloud. Trap out, trap house. Check it out. <laughs> That is awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Come back anytime, guys. Um, and as for here on We Hate Movies, of course, uh, patreon.com slash we hate movies. We are right in the middle of our We Love Movies Month. Uh, a lot of special stuff going on on the Patreon, including a We uh, or a Nexus episode all about Star Trek the Motion Picture. Uh, we got a We Hate Movies on Rotten Rids Hannibal from 2001. Uh, what do we got on AD, Steve? Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. My wife, Jen, joined us for that. That's an episode that's super fun. We're also doing, uh, who are we doing on the, the Gleep Glossary there? Eric? Oh, yeah. The Gleep, Gra- Gleep Glossary will be discussing the history and times of Chewbacca. So please <laughs> do <laughs> into that. Love all we got it. We gonna talk about his death, dude. His, his death, death, yeah. Now he gets crushed by a moon, and we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and then here on the the main feed, uh, the free feed, as it is, the show continues next week, Steve. Uh, with uh, what motion picture will we be talking about? Totally, sort of by accident, because we're not very good at picking stuff. We are continuing the career of Keanu Reeves. Uh, the very next year <laughs> with Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, with Francis Ford yeah. Coppola's yeah. Bram yes. Stoker's Dracula, which, fuck, which rules the fucking. Screen. We it shall does. be married when I return. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man if you want to talk about blown lines and bad accents Keanu all over that movie uh, but that is going to be a lot of fun talking about werewolf fucking and bad accents and mm-hmm. shadow play uh, so until next week with Bram Stoker's Dracula I'm Andrew Jupin Steven Sadak Eric Siska Chris Cabin Matt Chrisman Will Medicare. take it easy <laughs> <laughs>